Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Magdalene Malbe. I'll be taking you through a journey into the life of an exceptional theorist in the field of human relations and scientific management. His name is George Elton Mayo. I'll be taking you through his biography and some significant contributions he has made in the field of study. George Elton Mayo. He was born on the 26th of December, 1880 in Australia. He studied philosophy and psychology at the University of Adelaide, where he also won the Robbie Fletcher Prize in Psychology. He continued his studies and earned a master's degree at the same university. Concerning his career, he, a, he was a psychologist, industrial researcher, professor, and an organizational theorist. He continued in this field of work until he resigned and was finally laid to rest on the 7th September 1949 in Guilford, United Kingdom. George Elton Mayo is known to be the father of the human relations movement and scientific management. He has conducted groundbreaking studies which are still relevant today with the most popular of them being the Philadelphia Spinning Mill and Hawthorne Experiments respectively. We will focus on the latter for most part of this presentation. The hypothesis which influenced the conduction of the Hawthorne experiment is as shown in the slide. The Hawthorne experiment is divided into four specific studies and we will take them one after the other. We will begin with the illumination study or illumination experiment. The illumination study was conducted to find out how varying levels of illumination affected productivity of workers. There were two groups, one control group and the other an experimental group. The control group was exposed to consistent intensity of light, while the experimental group was exposed to varying intensity of light. It was realized that an increase in illumination also increased productivity. However, a decrease in illumination had little to no effect on productivity. It was not until that illumination in the room was decreased to that of the intensity of moonlight that there was a depreciation in the productivity of the workers. It was thus concluded that... An undetermined human factor was supposed to be the reason to the varying changes of illumination. We will look at the relay assembly test room study. This was conducted to determine the effects of changes in hours and other working conditions on productivity. Two girls were chosen and were asked to also choose their co-workers. These ladies were introduced to numerous changes in sequence with a duration of each change ranging from 4 to 12 weeks. It was realized that due to the varying changes that were exposed or introduced to these ladies in terms of introduction of rest hours, a change in their work schedule, it was realized that absenteeism decreased, the morale of the ladies increased, and there was less supervision necessary. It was concluded that a change in the work attitude of the ladies towards their work is what resulted in an increase in productivity. We will look at the next study that was conducted afterwards, which is the mass interview program. The mass interview program was conducted to determine worker attitudes and sentiments towards their company's supervision, insurance plans, promotions, and wages. Interviews were conducted, 21,000 people in all being interviewed. Close-ended questions which resulted in yes or no responses 
and then a change into open-ended questions, which was able to appreciate individuality in the responses of workers. It was thus concluded that workers' behavior was influenced by group behavior. The last study in the Hawthorne experiment is what is called the Bank Wiring Observation Room Study. This was to determine and analyze social organization at work. 14 male workers were put together in a group and they were paid their wages based on individual output, whereas bonuses were based on group effort. It was realized that the high efficient workers did not put in so much effort so as not to outdo the low efficiency workers. Conclusion was raised that workers are social beings and as such the motivation to work or be efficient was not merely based on economic satisfaction. Conclusions were derived from the four experiments that were raised. We could see that the norms and cohesiveness of a group of workers had an influence on their effectiveness, their impact, their behavior, as well as individual accomplishments and encouraging their members to excel. These four experiments gave birth to what is now known as the Hawthorne effect. The Hawthorne effect states that subjects of behavioral studies change their behavior when they know they are being observed. Simply put, people change their behavior when they know they are being watched. Interesting. Just like any other theory that was propounded, George Elton Mayer's theory, Hawthorne experiment faced a number of criticisms. Daniel Bell mentioned that the Hawthorne experiment or the Hawthorne effect only adjusted men to machines rather than enlarging their capacity or ability to be able to work in freedom. Reynard Bendix mentioned that the steady population were too small and as such, the results being generalized were overly extreme. He was of the view that whatever assumptions that came up from the Hawthorne's experiment were flawed in terms or in relation to human cooperation. Jose Ortega Yigaze mentioned that when it comes to working with people, there is a possibility of the stranger idea where humans are naturally suspicious of one another and this can influence efficiency and productivity. The Hawthorne's experiment, or should I say the Hawthorne effect, has helped in addressing workplace problems has also improved on working conditions, also helped in proper communication between supervisors and co-workers, as well as emphasize the need or importance of group working. I would like to end this presentation with a quote by George Elton Meyer. He said, and I quote, unlocking the psyche of the worker is the understanding of industrial unrest at home and abroad. This presentation, kindly share in the comments below whatever questions you have concerning this presentation. Thank you, and my name once again is Magdalene Margaret.